Hey guys, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. Today we're going to be building a real estate website. We're actually building this website today, guys. It's going to be about two hours for the tutorial. So right away, I want to tell you that you can use the chapters down below to navigate through the episode just to see where you want to go instead of watching the entire thing. Normally, we give away the website files for free, but this is a pro website. It's going to involve a license key, so we can't give this one away. We are not going to be using a run-of-the-mill ready-made template. We're actually going to be using advanced custom fields. And even before we get into the tutorial, if you don't know what advanced custom fields is, it's basically a custom way of representing data in WordPress. You know everything on the internet is data. This video is data. Uh, blog post is data. Uh, product being sold on Amazon is data. The real estate listing is going to be a custom way of representing data in much the same way that we can represent a car for a car sale website or a hotel for a hotel booking, well, hotel suites for a hotel booking website, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to learn how to build this website. We're going to learn how to design this website we're going to learn how to create listings and right away guys i want you to understand that once you click on this listing you're going to notice something interesting it says edit property so you can't just edit the page right it's not a page it's actually a custom field a custom post type and we're going to learn all about that today although that is not going to be the main focus of today's tutorial you look at the design, it's very beautiful, very minimalistic. It's actually really wonderful. I love what we have right here. The thing about this design, guys, is that you're gonna realize that there are a lot of features, or a lot of very useful features that you can use to actually get this website working really beautifully. You can go ahead and schedule a viewing. We even have a really nice sidebar right here. I want to also, before we get into the tutorial, just put it out there. It's at the end of the tutorial, but I'm gonna put it here as well. If you want to learn after you've built this website, all right, if you want to learn how to use this website to generate revenues, so you know, set up ads, do marketing, get website traffic and convert your website traffic into leads and then revenues for your business or for yourself, you might be a real estate agent, then comment marketing below. You haven't even watched the tutorial as yet, and I'm saying to you that if you want to learn how to make revenues from your website, not just this website only, but you're here for this, so might as well be for this, then just go ahead and comment marketing below, and we will actually start creating tutorials. Google ads, SEO, social media marketing, lead generation, email marketing, everything that you need to know how to do to start generating revenues from your website. Coupled in this um, tutorial is going to be a little bit about branding. So you can set up your own personal or business brand. You can set the right color, the right font. You can learn, you will learn how to do web design, web development, digital marketing, SEO, which is a part of digital marketing and email marketing, lead generation, conversion rate optimization. This is a lot more than a WordPress tutorial. And as you see, this website is actually very beautiful. And I like what we have right here. Let's go ahead and check out our properties. You're gonna learn how to create pages. You're gonna learn how to create a listing. Notice that this is Negril Beach. I am from Jamaica. Negril is in Jamaica. And this is actually the beach in Jamaica, guys. Actually, it's really beautiful. You can see the horizon. There's a part of the island of Jamaica. Actually really nice. So enough rambling, enough talking. Let's just get right into the tutorial. I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna love this. My name is JBS Roberts and welcome to Selhan. Let's go. All right, to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to get our domain name and we're going to set up our website hosting. The way we're going to go about this is not the way that they normally do it. And here's what I mean. In the description of this video, there is going to be a link to different website hosts. We're going to have name here and a few others. What we're going to do is we are going to get our domain name from Name Hero. All right. So you're going to click on the link in the description. It's going to take you to Name Hero. Hopefully, you don't have to go to recapture like I have to go through here. And then it's going to take you to Name Hero. The domain name is going to be your .com, your .co, your .org the name of your website, the website address. 
So google.com, namehere.com, that's the domain name. Most times it's going to be your business name.com. So if your business is Pete's Pizzas, it's going to be Pete's Pizzas.com. And sometimes it can be .co.uk, depending on what you'd like. And then after that, you're going to set up what's called hosting. Hosting is going to be the computer that is on 24-7 or the server that is on 24-7 that's going to make your website available across the globe. What we're going to do that's different, and I'm going to show you how to do it the regular way. We're not going to be using shared hosting that is named here. We're going to be doing, we're going to be used in managed hosting because the managed hosting solution we're going to be using is a little bit price flexible, but it offers a lot more power. What we're going to do here is that instead of using name hero for the domain name and the hosting, like most of the YouTube tutorials, we're going to go a little bit more advanced where we can use more advanced and better web servers like Amazon Web Servers or Google Cloud, for example. Or we can go cheaper and use DigitalOcean or Vulture or Linode. And we're going to get this by using Cloudways. So here's what we're going to do. On a name here, on name here is on page, namehero.com, we're going to click domains. We're just going to purchase a domain. So I'm going to type Z um, Zelhan Tutorials. And I'm not going to be using .com this time. I'm going to be using .co.uk. I know I am not in the UK. So we have .com. That's added from my previous session because I was trying to set up hosting. But don't worry, boy. It's going to be the same process. What I want is .co.uk. So there are different domain names. We're just going to go with .co.uk option because it is cheap. It's added to cart. Now I'm going to click on the cart. I am going to remove the hosting that is there. So it says here that if you plan on purchasing web hosting with Name Hero, and this is the most important part, because remember I told you that we're not going to be hosting with Name Hero in this situation. But if you're using Name Hero as a host, you click continue and then you can purchase your hosting and you can go from there. But we're not going to be using Name Hero. I am going to leave the name servers as is though, because I don't yet know the name servers for the host that I'm going to be getting. So we'll get that later. So this part right here, zelantutorials.com, is from the previous part of the tutorial that you guys probably won't see when I was trying to get hosting from Name Hero and it was not working. In another tutorial, I'll show you how to get Name Hero hosting. But right now it's not working. The checkout page is crashing. So let's hope it doesn't happen with the domain name. So zelantutorials.co.uk, email forwarding DNS management. You can get those. This is just a tutorial for me. I don't need it, so I won't get them, but you can get them. You can read it basically makes your website available faster and it makes you have all your emails in one inbox perfectly fine not a, not a big deal for me so we're going to continue all right so i don't need the dot com let's remove that no savings we are going to create a new account all right so once you've created your account all right guys so you're going to create your account first name last name email address etc etc your billing address and all of that good stuff once you have created your account, you're going to go ahead and select your payment method, enter your payment details, all right? And read, you have read and agreed to the terms of service, and you check out. And that's what it's going to be. I already have an account with Name Hero. I think I'm going to go ahead and use that existing customer account because I just need a domain name. I don't need a separate account. When I'm doing the hosting tutorial for you guys again, then we'll get a new account. So I'm just going to use the existing customer login. You're going to log in. Everything is as I'd like it. Read and agreed to the terms of service. And we are going to check out now. All right. So let's go ahead and check out. All right, order placed, continue to client area because we're going to need this section. Now I do have eight domains here. I've had more, some are expired, some not so expired. We're gonna click on domains. We are gonna go all the way over to Zelhan Tutorials. Let me just make myself a little bit smaller. Um, Zelhan Tutorials are co.uk. We are gonna click on this one, click on it. And everything is as we would like it to be. No SSL, perfectly fine. We'll set that up very soon. So now that we have this set up, and remember guys, once you set up your account, you're going to want to go to your email address that you used, and you're going to want to get all the good stuff happening, like getting your confirmation code and everything like that. You can go ahead and do that. I already had an account. That's something I need to show you. Now for the hosting, the hosting that we're going to be using this time is Cloudways. And Cloudways is a very, into it's something that I love because you can choose where you host your website at which server. It can be Google Cloud, it can be Amazon Web Services for higher performance websites. So like my most important clients with like e-commerce platforms and so on. Always AWS, always Google Cloud. Or you can go with something a bit more budget friendly. For this tutorial, we're going to use that. I'm going to be using Vulture. 
For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new account with Cloudways because I'm actually going to be getting website hosting. Now, Cloudways is very beautiful. I won't ramble on too much. We're just going to get started. So we're going to say start free. I am going to sign up with my Google account. You can just enter first name, last name, and so on. Everybody can do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the Google method. So I'm going to click continue with Google. I'm going to select the email address. I am going to continue. All right, so now that I need, now I need to set a password. I'm just going to select a strong password. I will describe myself as, uh, <laughs> I'm a lot of things right now. So I'm going to say digital agency for this person. Yeah, I'm just going to say digital agency. My own hosting spend is 50 to 250. I agree to the terms of service, privacy policy. I am going to continue. To activate your account, sign in. All right, so submit details. Ah. All right, guys, good news. So my Cloudways account has been activated. Woohoo! <laughs> it took a few days, but I'll show you the process. So to get activated, you just need to go to cloudways.com. All right, so you apply for an account. Then you actually go to cloudways.com. Let me get my chat out of the way. And it's going to be right there. And when you go to cloudways.com, you're going to click send a message. All right, send us a message. Go to verification. Once you go to verification, it's going to automatically comply with the instructions to get verified. So I literally did all, all of this. So I sent them the email account that I used to sign up. I sent them links to my Twitter and LinkedIn accounts. I sent them my company's website, which, you know, sellhide.com. I sent them my ID. So I used my driver's license. And I also sent them my contact number. So I used two socials. I used my company's website. I used the email address, my driver's license, government issued ID. And within about three or four hours, I was verified. So we're verified. We are going to log in and activate. I understand the risks. Take me there. All right, this is good. So here's what we're going to be doing. Let's get started. Okay, so here it's telling us you can deploy you can deploy more apps once your first server is ready. So to set up a WordPress install, we're just going to click next right here. And I'm going to call this. All right. Go next. Actually, I need to name it first app. First app. I'm going to call this first first server. And I'm going to call this startup project. I'm just going to install startup project. And we go next. So it's saying that I can only use DigitalOcean, AWS, and Google. So let's just go ahead, set up that. Select your desired server size. I'm just doing a test website, so I can just go with a one gig regular um, server, but most times they're gonna go with a two gig high performance. All right, so I'm just gonna go with my one gig regular server. Let's go next. So the location I'm gonna use is actually Miami. If I can use Miami, it doesn't seem like Miami is one of the options. I'll just go with New York for now then. So try to blaze in platform with three day trial, no credit card. Yes, let's go on. I'm perfectly fine. You're all set and so I'm gonna launch now. And remember, this is a WordPress install. You can also go with a multi-site. So that's a WordPress multi-site and you can go with a WooCommerce installation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and launch now. So it's adding my server. All right, first server has been created. Our server is here. We have an application. So after you've made your server, this is the most important part. After you've made your server, so you're going to go to dashboard. We have a server right here. So we have a server installed. Here's what you're going to do next. You're going to click on your server. You're going to copy the public IP. You're going to log into your name here, a client section. When you log into your name here, a client section, you're going to go to DNS management. At DNS management, you're going to add at a record and you're going to paste in the IP address and save changes. So this is what you will have when you're done. Once you've done that, I want you to copy your website URL. I want you to go incognito and go to DNS checker. All right, DNS checker. You're gonna paste in the URL. You're gonna search the A records. The 
address that you see right here should be the same address from your Cloudways IP. And it should also be the same for your A record. And what DNS checker is basically saying to you, it is telling you that, all right, your website domain is available across the globe on this server. This is the IP address for your server. This is the A record for it. And that's all you need to do. If you go to Name Hero or you go to your public registry, your DNS, or you go to your domain name register, and they don't have the option to add the A record, open a support ticket, tell them that this is the IP address for your Cloudways server. You'd like to have them add it to your domain so you can use Cloudways for your domain. Once that is done, you're going to go back to Cloudways. All right. You're going to go to your first app. This is your WordPress install. You're ready to use this. So you're just going to click on this. You have two URLs right here. You're going to have the application URL. If you click here, it takes you to the actual website. And if you click here, it takes you to the admin panel. You copy the login URL and you copy the password. You're going to paste it in and you can log in. So the next thing that you're going to do after you've seen the IP address, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to copy the domain name. You're going to go back to Cloudways. You're going to go to domain management. The default, the primary is going to be this long, ugly URL that you can't share with anyone. What you're going to do is you're going to add domain. You're going to paste in your URL and then you're going to add domain. After you've added the domain, it's going to appear, but it's going to be here. You're just going to right click and make primary for the actual domain. Once that is done, it still won't work because you need to have a SSL. You need to have a SSL certificate installed. So to install the SSL certificate, you're going to go to SSL certificate. Let's encrypt. You're going to use your email address. I'm just going to use one for the business and you're going to paste in your domain and you're going to install SSL certificates. Once the SSL certificate is installed, we're going to go to incognito. We're going to paste the URL. We're going to see if it works. And it works. Now, to go to your admin address, you're just going to right click here. You're going to say WP admin. Once that happens, you're going to go back to Cloudways, access details, copy, and paste your email address. Copy and paste your password and you're going to log in and there you go all right now that we're on our wordpress dashboard we're going to have to get a little bit more um excited as i might put we're going to move a little bit quickly because we want to get something up that we can show our friends we want to get the website up i mean let's just go right here once more and take a look at our website i mean it's nothing to write about at the moment it's there and it's nice let me reduce myself because i'm not the focus it's there and it's nice, you know, it's pretty good. We could do some things with this. All right, so let's go ahead and make some changes. So we're going to go back to our dashboard, or from here you can go to my blog dashboard, and we're going to have to set up what's called a permalink. Now, here's what a permalink is. It's literally the URL. So you click right here in the search bar. This structure that you see right here is a permalink. And the reason why this is important is because if your permalink isn't descriptive of what your page is about, then it's bad for SEO. SEO is search engine optimization. And with SEO, you can increase website traffic. And you know, if you don't get website traffic, you can get leads, you can get real estate clients, etc., etc. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up our permalink so we can get more website traffic and that will increase the revenues we get from our website. To do that, we're going to go to settings and permalinks. The ideal permalink structure is post name. Everything else, as you can see, it doesn't explain what it is about, but post name is best. So let's go ahead and save that. While we're here, we're going to do some changes to our WordPress general settings. So let's go to settings general. We are going to rename from my blog to Zelen Real Estate Pipe and the best. Well, we're going to say Los Angeles is apostrophe S. Is that how it works? English teachers, Los Angeles is best. So Los Angeles best real estate. That is not how you spell available. 
that is how you spell it. So we're going to change it to Zelhan Real Estate, Los Angeles' best home real estate agent, weekend service available. And the reason why I change it to this is because it's a very descriptive, um, it's very descriptive of what the website is about, and that will help with our search engine optimization. At least that's what I've seen the best guys do. So I'm just going to follow them. We are going to change from my WordPress blog to Los Angeles' best real estate services, real estate agent. We can change our site icon here, which is quite interesting because we're updated to the latest version of WordPress. I am currently recording this on Wednesday, April 17. I know there was a WordPress update over the past 10 to 14 days, which I've added to my site and my client site. So we're going to change our site icon here just because it gives us the option. So to change our site icon, you know, click change site icon. We're going to upload files. By the way, a site icon is this WC right here. It's going to tell you, and you have to change this. If you don't change it, it's going to make your website look very unprofessional. So it tells your website visitors that this is where you are. You're at the right place. And generally, you want to put your logo here. So yet again, just click choose site icon. We're going to upload files. I'm going to upload all my logos right now. While our logos are being uploaded, I want to teach you about Image SEO. Image SEO is where you optimize your website images for search engine optimization, meaning that your website images are going to increase your website traffic. We're going to take a look at that in the future. But for now, we're just going to change our site icon and add it right here. Set a site icon. We are going to crop image. And that is our site icon. It's right here. Once we save, we're going to see the changes addressed. This is our admin email. You can change that if you like. New user role is subscribe. We're not going to change that. We are going to change our time zone. Why do we change our time zone? Well, when you change your time zone and WordPress has some activity, like someone logs into your site or signs up or becomes a lead or makes a purchase if it's e-commerce. By the way, you can check out our e-commerce tutorials. WordPress is going to tell you the time that it took place. It's going to grab a time from here. And so you want it to be in a time zone that you're currently in or you're most frequently in or accommodated to just to give you some uniformity and consistency and a better idea of what's happening. So I'm literally going to just change. I'm literally going to change this to Jamaica since I'm in Jamaica. You can change it to your country or city, depending on how big your country is. And we're going to keep the time, the date format. We are going to change the time to this format. And I believe the week should continue to start on a Sunday for very religious reasons. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save changes. Notice our site icon has been updated. It's very different from what we have right here. All right, so that's very good. The next thing that we need to do, we're going to go back to our dashboard. I'm going to make a small change. Just going to change my profile settings just to have this a little bit more uh, customized. I am going to go with the ectoplasm setting for this one, and we're going to save changes. Now, let's go back to dashboard. We're going to get into the meat of the matter. This is where we're going to add our starter site. We're going to actually get our real estate website installed right now. But before we can install that, we're going to need to understand two very important concepts as it comes to WordPress. That is going to be plugins and themes. Now, what are plugins? What are themes? Well, a theme is the operating system version of your website. Now, we do have what's called Android OS on your phone and we have iOS on your phone. Well, the theme is going to be very similar to that because it dictates how your website is going to look greatly and it's the core of your website. Now, the actual OS is WordPress because that's a CMS. But to help you understand what the theme is, it's like the architecture or the blueprint since we're building a real estate website of your website. That's not going to change very much. And the plugins are going to be the features, the blue color, um, the Bluetooth in the home, well, Wi-Fi system in the home, uh, the pool that well. The pool will be a part of the, the architecture, but you can add a pool inside with an indoor pool, correct? So the plugin is going to be like the apps you would install on your phone, which is an easier way of looking at it. You can install WhatsApp on your iOS and on your Android device, on your Apple and Android device. And the WhatsApp or the plugins that you install add features or functions to your phone, add features or functions to your website. And that's a plugin here. So we're going to start with plugins because in order for us to work with a plugin, we're going to have to have a theme. But when we change our theme, a whole lot of changes are going to take place. Let's start with a plugin. To look at a plugin and add, install, and remove WordPress plugins, you're going to go to plugins and install plugins. And there are a few plugins right here. We have Akismet and we have Hello Dolly. And the thing I want you to know is that WP Server is one that I installed. 
we're going to take a look at this. It says WP Server Security Anti-Spam and Malware Scan. And you can read the description right here. And the thing about this plugin is that it adds website security to our website. It's securing our website. And the reason why I've added it while developing it is because, you know, you don't want your website to get hacked while you're working on it. So we're going to have to go through website security very soon. But before we get there, let's actually get some more work done. To add a plugin, we are going to go to add new plugin, or we can go to plugins, add new plugin. Let us say that you want a real estate listing website. So you want to add some real estate listing function. You can type real estate listing. Sorry for the caps. Let me just remove that. And it will search. And here are a few real estate listing plugins. I actually used this one on one of my clients' website, a static real estate plugin, and it was updated recently. That's very good. You can continue to scroll down or scroll around and view different real estate listing plugins. And here's the thing. You can also research on Google for the best ones to use. So this isn't your only resource. But let's say we're going to install a static because I'm familiar with that. You just click Install. Once it's installed, just like an app on your phone, you have to activate it. So let's go ahead and activate. And once it's, oh, wow. So what happens is that this plugin is not working. I wonder if, they're from, if, they're, um, if they've realized this. And I don't know this error, guys. I have not been, I'm not the one that made it. So I don't know why it's getting this error. So we're going to have to get a new plugin, guys. And um, let me just refresh because this plugin isn't working. I'm going to leave that in the tutorial because it says active, which is strange. I'm going to leave that in the tutorial because this is the first I've seen that. I think it's a good learning experience for you. A lot of times you will install a plugin and it doesn't work. That doesn't mean it's your fault. Like it says last updated four days ago, four months ago, not necessarily what you want to go with. Four months ago, reason is because as WordPress gets updated, changes are made, right? And like I said, this is a recent version of WordPress. So that could be causing an error. Interestingly, it actually works. So you go right here and you see it's installed. You can go to your dashboard and there are different things that you can do with this plugin. To remove the plugin, you're going to go to plugins, install the plugins. You're going to have to do two things. First, you're going to have to deactivate your activated plugin that you want to remove. And then you can click delete. OK. Or you can click right here and you can remove the ones that you want to skip. The ones that you want to work on are going to be ticked. You can deactivate both action and apply. Well, these are already deactivated, so nothing's going to happen. You can do the same thing again and bulk action and delete and apply. And here's the thing when it comes down to your website security and your plugins, it's going to be the same with your themes. If there is a plugin on your website that you're not using, go ahead and deactivate and delete. Because like I said, WordPress get update. WordPress gets updated at times, as you saw. Aesthetic was updated four days ago as of the date of recording. And um, plugins get updated, meaning that code gets outdated and hackers might find a way to exploit old and vulnerable code. Sometimes the reason why plugins are updated is for security reasons, right? So remove plugins that are not being used on your website. All right. So that's it for plugins. We already have one plugin here. We're going to learn more about website security in a short few minutes, like literally in the next 10, 15 minutes, maybe. You can use the chapters down below to just fast forward to different parts of the tutorial. Now about themes. Now, the reason why this website looks this way is because of the theme. You know, the theme actually set it up this way. So to figure out our themes, we go back to our dashboard, or we go right here, and we go to appearance and themes. You're going to see a few themes installed, all right? We're not going to be using all of these themes at once. We can only use one theme at a time, and at any one time, there must be a theme installed. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the 2023 theme. This is the default WordPress theme. So any theme that says 2021, 2, 3, these are default from WordPress. Very safe, very stable. Keep one of them just in case the actual theme you install doesn't work. Let's take a look at the 2023 theme. Let's look at the live preview. And it's going to show us what the website would look like if we installed and activated. Well, it's already installed, but if we activated the 2023 theme, this is what it looked like. All right. It's very different from what we have right now uh, because we have the 2024 theme installed. So let's just go back, go back to appearance and themes. I never like how that happened. We're going to click 2022 and we are going to delete. Let me go over to the side. 
we're going to click 2022 and we are going to delete. If you would take a notice, we cannot delete or deactivate the one theme that we have activated, all right? Because there's only one theme there. If there was another theme, we could deactivate and then delete. So we always need a theme on our website, right? Without the architecture, the core, the frame of the house, or the chassis of the car, or the, the iOS of your phone, it doesn't come together, right? It doesn't work. So we're going to add new theme. We can go to themes, then add new theme. The theme that we're going to be using is the Bloxy theme for this tutorial. It's right here under our popular themes. I've used the Elo Elementor, Astra, Cadence, Ocean. I've used many of these themes from before. We're not gonna be using them in this tutorial. These themes are generally very safe. It's very possible that you're gonna come here and you're not gonna see the Bloxy theme. So here's how you're gonna search for the theme that we're gonna use. You're gonna to go to search themes. Wow, big whoop. <laughs> and Bloxy is already there. You can go ahead and type it in or you can click if it's already there. Uh, click on Bloxy right here. It's gonna show you something very interesting. This is what our website is gonna look like with the Bloxy theme, very beautiful as it is. Like, I know it doesn't look like much right now, guys, but you'll see. Just go ahead and install, and we're gonna activate right away. Now that we've installed and activated Bloxy, we need to install Bloxy Companion. It says right here, Bloxy Companion plugin. Now this plugin works with the Bloxy theme. You must have Bloxy theme installed for it to work properly. So we're going to go ahead and click install Bloxy Companion. If you don't see the message to install Bloxy Companion, remember it's a plugin, right? So you can just go ahead and copy the name right here. Oh, oh well, if you can't see the message, you can't copy, right? <laughs> My bad. Let's go to plugins, add new plugin, and we're going to type Bloxy. Once we type Bloxy, Bloxy Companion should come up. And here it is, Bloxy Companion. Let's go ahead and install now. And we are going to activate. All right. Once we have activated Bloxy Companion, here's the interesting thing. We're going to go back to our dashboard. Oh, well, do I have to go to dashboard? But I already clicked there, so uh, let's see. Let it go. We're going to go visit site and open link in new tab. Remember, this is what we started with. By installing Bloxy, this is what we have. I remember, it showed us that this is how our site would look, all right? So go back to our dashboard, and we're going to go to starter sites. We're going to look for the real estate starter site. It's right here. It's Bloxy Pro. So let's go ahead and preview. This is the starter site that we're going to need, guys. We are going to need this starter site. It's a pro starter site. It's very beautiful if you click on one of these listings, you're gonna see how wonderfully made it is. And I like that it has the house plan right here. That is actually quite beautiful, very beautiful. So we're gonna be getting this site installed, this starter site installed on our current website that currently looks like this. So how do we do that? Well, it is a pro starter site. So the way to install our pro starter site, let's go back here pro starter set is we need to go to Bloxy and we need to get a Bloxy account. So in the description of the video below, so this is a tutorial I've made before. You're going to just go to the description. You're going to click more and you're going to scroll all the way down to our episode links. Bloxy theme and plugin. You're going to click on Bloxy theme and plugin and it's going to take you here. It's going to take you here. By the way, that is an affiliate link. When you purchase Bloxy, we're going to get a commission but it's not going to cost you anything extra. If you're uncomfortable with using our affiliate link, you can literally just type in Bloxy in the search bar and it will click, or you can type creativethemes.com. It'll take you here, perfectly fine. You don't have to use our affiliate link, but it does help us grow the channel and create more content like this. Better content as well. We have so much planned for you. It's going to be amazing. On Bloxy, you're going to go to pricing. You can use just the annual license personal for one site, or if you have a professional business that you're starting or an agency, you can use one of these. You can also go with the lifetime. After a year, your license is expired. If you go with annual, you still get features, but you don't get pro updates. That's all there is. So you can go ahead and annual, personal, buy now. That's one of them. Once you go ahead and fill in all your information and check out. You're gonna be presented with the account page. So go ahead and log in. I'm gonna log in into my account right now. Once you're on your account, 
you're going to see websites if you already have it installed. I already have it installed on this uh, domain because I used it before. I am going to let it stay as is, but I'm going to go to downloads. You should go to downloads as well. And you're going to download Bloxy Companion, this version right here. Just go ahead and download. I'm going to copy my license key and done. So it's downloaded and I've copied my license key as well. We're going to head back to dashboard. We're not going to go ahead and install from here because remember, it's not installed for the, we need a pro license. So we're going to have to install our pro license, then install a starter site. If we're not going to be using a pro starter site, then we can just go ahead and click import. All right, so let's go to plugins, add new plugin because we just downloaded Bloxy Pro plugin. We're going to upload a plugin, which is another way of uploading plugins that are not in the WordPress repository. We're going to choose file. We're going to select our file. We're going to install now. Once it's installed, we're going to activate our plugin. Now we have Bloxy Pro activated. Paste our license key. We are going to say, yes, send me security features and updates. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm just going to go ahead and be a good a good noodle, as SpongeBob would put it. <laughs> SpongeBob at that time like this, right, guys? And there we go. So we have Bloxy Pro this time. We're going to go to our starter sites. We're going to click on our real estate uh, starter set and we're going to import. Yes, do install the child team, please. Install all these plugins because they're required to get the website working. Let's go next. And these options and we are going to install. Now that our starter set is imported successfully, we're going to go ahead and view site. Remember, this is what we started with. Let me just close my Bloxy account here. Not not very beautiful, but it is a website. <laughs> I've seen worse than I've seen worse than we go right here. Nothing to look at. And this is our current website, guys. This is where we are. You can share your URL, copy, it's WhatsApp, email, whatever it is, and share this URL to your friend with your friends and family. And this will be your website. Absolutely beautiful. And I like what I'm seeing here. It is stunning, mesmerizing. I like the features. I like the layout. I like the setting. This is actually very beautiful. Let me go ahead and refresh so that our, um, so our site icon isn't getting updated. That's perfectly fine. This is what it is. Let's check out our contact page. There we go. About us and our properties. There we go. This is beautiful, guys. This is actually quite beautiful. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to head back to our dashboard right here. I'm going to close this tab because we don't need it. I know what happened. Our site icon got replaced. We have an update available. Whenever you log into your WordPress dashboard, you're going to see this whenever an update is available. Click on this icon. It is going to tell you which plugin is outdated, Bloxy Companion Premium. So we're going to go ahead and update. It means that I would have uploaded the wrong version. All right, so let's go ahead and update. Nothing to be excited or scared about. It is updated and we can go back to our dashboard. All right, so we see a few more things over here. Green shift, reusable templates. We see Bloxy and we see Fluent Forms. ACF, advanced custom fields. Beautiful. So here's the thing, guys. We don't have to get too excited because these are unproperties because these are all created because of the starter site. Interesting. The next thing that we're going to have to do, so if you click right here, visit site and open LinkedIn incognito, you can see the website, right? You don't want this to happen. I'll tell you why. When you're building something, like you're building an amazing building downtown, you don't build it in public so everyone can come in and come out while you're in constructing phase, right? Because it's not safe. It's not ready. You want to show the final product. It's the same thing with your website. This is your website. It is, but it doesn't have your information. Your contact information isn't there. Your picture and your branding color and all those good stuff aren't there. So you want to add those before you open it to the public. Me, you can show this to your friends and say, hey, I just made this website. Congratulations. Good for you. I'm happy for you. But you're going to want to get some work going. So what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called uh, under construction or coming soon page. We're just going to stop usual, normal, regular website visitors from actually seeing the website, but it's going to allow you and those you want to see it to actually see it. And this is going to be achieved by using a plugin. So we're going to go to plugins, add new plugin. We are going to search for a plugin. We are going to type construction. 
that is unstructured. Let me just add my C. Under construction is right here. We're gonna go ahead and install 700,000 users. So go ahead and install. And then we are going to activate this plugin. Once it's activated, we're gonna see, let's just go to dashboard because it's not reloaded. So it hasn't added the option. It's gonna come right here. All right, there it is. So we're gonna to go to under construction and we're gonna to go to settings. It's not yet activated, all right, but that's perfectly fine. We are gonna use, so I don't need this. We're gonna use one of these templates, the free ones, we don't have to pay for it. So I think we're gonna go with this one. This one looks a little bit more like real estate and building. You can keep scrolling through to see if there's anyone that you like. This is also a really nice one, loader at work. So you can choose the one that you'd like. All right, I am going to go ahead and use this one under construction. So let's go ahead and activate. We can go to the content and we can change from, sorry, we're doing some work on the side. So sorry, our site is currently under construction. And then we are going to save changes. You can add your social profile right here. All right, we're not gonna do that. And uh, once that's done, it's still not activated. I mean, if you go right here and you visit site incognito, you can still see the website, so it's not yet activated. We are gonna go to under construction and we're gonna turn on. All right, now that it's turned on, let's just go again incognito. And there you go, our site is currently under construction. So you can see it. You can just disable this whenever you wanna share with your friends and family. And once you, once you go back incognito, you can see. So go ahead and activate, visit incognito, all right? You can see it, that's good. Now, if you visit site now, you can see the website, which is pretty amazing. It says here it's enabled, but you are whitelisted, so you see the normal site. And you can add IPs to the whitelist. We're not gonna worry about that, it's a little bit advanced. We're not going to do advanced things in this tutorial. All right. So this is our website, even though under construction is on because we are logged in, we can see it. That's good. Now, what I want you guys to do is go back to your dashboard and we're going to have to get website security set up. So we haven't done much work in the grand scheme of things. We have done a lot, really. We've got our domain name. We've got website hosting. We added a SSL security. SSL certificate for our website security. What we've added our starter site, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm just go ahead and close these as well. And we need to protect our work. And the reason why we're gonna protect our work is because we don't wanna spend a week, two weeks, four weeks, probably six months working on this website. And when it's ready to go live, we find out that it's been hacked, it's infected with malware, all our work is gone, and we didn't save, we didn't secure, and we've lost all our work that we've been working on. So to add website security, yes, it's gonna come from plugins. We're gonna to go to plugins, add new. Install plugins, really, because the first plugin I wanna explain for you guys, oh, we're not using Blocks of Companion because we're using a premium version. Just go ahead and delete that. Keep up with my own sermon. So we have WP security, anti-spam and malware, spam, malware scan. This plugin is not available in the WordPress repository. I just use it because it's the one I've been using for the past few years, but we're gonna use a replacement. Let's go to add new plugin. We are going to install really simple SSL. So let's go ahead and install. We're not gonna activate any of these. We're just gonna install them. The next one that we are gonna install is Updraft Plus. This is gonna do backups for our website. The next one that we're gonna install is Sukuri. Sukuri. So we're gonna go ahead and install Sukuri. We already have Updraft and we are gonna install website security plugin that I use. The one that we're gonna use is Solid Security. I've been using this on my client side for the past six years, never been hacked, always reliable. So let's go ahead and install that one. Very good. Now, there is a detailed website security tutorial in the description below. 
you can watch that for a detailed explanation of everything that we're going to be doing from this point forward. But if you're comfortable moving a little bit quickly, then go ahead and keep watching this tutorial. If you want more detailed explanations on each step, then watch a detailed website security tutorial that's linked in the description. All right. So we're going to go to plugins, install plugins. We are going to start with really simple SSL. Activate really simple SSL. Once that is activated, we are going to so we have our hosting provider. You can select your hosting provider from here. I'm not going to do that, but you can. We are all also with Cloudways, perhaps. Perhaps you're going to change to another host. You can go ahead and do that. Then activate SSL. We are going to enable and include tips and tricks. Sure, why not? Save and continue. I'm not going to install these plugins because I want to keep this site lightweight. So I'm going to skip installing them and we're going to finish. SSL has been installed as far as we can install. The other things that are there are premium features, so we're going to have to leave those for now. The next plugin that we're going to install, and be prepared to be logged out of your website and have to log back in, guys. So that's normally something that happens when you install website security plugins. That's fine. We're going to go back to plugins, install the plugins. We are going to go to Scurry. Normally when I set up Scurry, I'm logged out of the website, so be careful for that. Grab your username and password real quickly. Over here we see Scurry Security. Let's go to our dashboard, and we are going to go to Settings, Hardening. We're going to harden everything except for Enable Website Firewall Protection. The reason why we're not going to harden this is because if we click Apply Hardening, it says we need a premium service. now. My clients and I enjoy these premium services because I do get website security from Scurry. We have an agreement, a contract signed, and we have a premium license key. If you become one of our clients, you will enjoy that, or you can sign up for yourself and get those website security benefits. So we're not going to enable hardening for our firewall protection, but we're going to enable hardening for everything else. Just click apply hardening and do that for everything else. Do this one last, guys. So everything is hardened except for the firewall protection. That is good. If I go back to dashboard, I might be logged out. Might be. No, I'm not. Oh, that's good. Let's go back to our plugins and our installed plugins once more. You can go ahead and activate solid security. I'm going to go through rather quickly for you what you're going to do because I can't use solid security and server on the same website. All right. So you're going to configure now because I'm using a VPN at the moment or you can go to solid security and set up. You're gonna add your IP here. This is my detected IP, unconfigured, check IP. That is my IP. And I think that should be okay. So we're gonna to go to setup, guys. So what are we doing? It's not e-commerce and it's not a blog, but it is a business website. It's not a network. I think we should do a multi-site network to multi-site website soon. So I guess we can do because I don't see business website. I want to go with e-commerce because that might give me the best. So I don't have pro version. Let me see if we need a pro license for this. Let's click next. My own website, indeed. I am, um, so there, you're gonna have customers if you've installed um, WooCommerce, but for now we say subscriber. Yes, next. So my IP is this because I already copied my IP and um, check IP and there it is right here. You can copy and paste it right there. I'm going to authorize my IP so you can do that and it will paste it for you as well. And I'm going to go next. I'm not going to enable two-factor authentication, but you can do that. And I'm going to do next. Default user groups. And we're just going to leave everything as this. Actually, let's enable that. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to do next. You can add your business email right here. And all, all administrator users will get the actual email. And we're going to complete setup. And that's going to be it for solid security. Remember that we already have WP Server installed. So I'm going to go ahead and deactivate solid security. But you can keep solid security and I will keep WP Server. It's just a personal preference at the moment. And I have, and that's all there is to it. And let's go to our settings. Or we should go to dashboard is what we should do. 
So I'm going to allow and continue. And um, let's just go to our dashboard is what we sh where is where, <laughs> words, right? Where we should have gone. And this looks beautiful. I think I might actually start using this again. But I do like the WP Servo because of its anti-spam features. All right, then. So that's it for website security. I'm not going to be keeping this because I already have WP Servo installed. So I'm going to go back to plugins. You don't have to do this step. I'm going to go to install plugins. And I'm going to deactivate WP Servo. And I'm going to delete. All right. Now for this next part of the tutorial, we are going to actually do some work on our website. We're going to learn about branding. We're going to learn about marketing. We're going to learn about editing our website and how to get clients and leads from our website. I want to walk you through what we're going to be doing next. So we have a color scheme. All right. Green, as you would see, there's a light green, there's a dark green. We're going to change this. I don't like this green all too much. I think it's a bit heavy, it comes on a bit strong. I like something a little, bit, a little bit cool, a little bit more welcoming. So we're going to have to change this color. And the color we're changing is part of what's called our branding. Now, our branding is going to be the colors, the typographies, the tone of voice that is associated with our business. You, know, you always associate black and white with Apple. And you associate red and yellow with Burger King or blue and red with um, Domino's Pizza. So we're going to use color psychology to influence the color that we're going to use. I think we're going to go with a nice blue, but you know, as the tutorial goes on, we'll, we'll, um, we'll figure that out. The other thing that we're going to change is we're going to change the typography. I don't really like this font for what we're doing. It's a little bit just meh. I think we could find something a little bit more pizzazz. <laughs> Words, right? So we're going to change the font. We're going to change um, the typing color. The, color of the website. We're going to add our logo. So this is not our logo as it is, right? So we're going to add our own logo. So that's there to look forward to. And then after we've changed our branding, that is our color and our font and our logos, we are going to do a bit of editing just to learn how to edit this website template so you can get it for your business, set up for your business, for your personal brand. We are going to learn how to use the website as well. And in all of this, we're going to also learn how to um, get clients and leads from this website. So let's just go ahead with the branding. From here, we can go to customize, but I'm going to go to dashboard just in case that's where you are. On the dashboard, we're going to go to appearance and customize. The first thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change the... So we have the site icon back again. So let's just ensure that it's actually there because no, it's gone. Because when we install the starter site, it replaced our site icon. So it's going to go down to site identity at core. We are going to change our site icon yet again. We're going to learn also how to do image SEO at this step. So go ahead and publish those changes. We're going to have our site title and tagline set up. The next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to go to our header because we need to change the logo. So we can go to header and change logo or we can hover over the logo and click these three dots. It will take us where we need to go. This is our header. We <coughs> This is our logo. We have two logos. We have a dark logo, a transparent logo, and a sticky state logo. We're going to change among these two. So the sticky state logo and the actual logo are the same. So it's going to go ahead and change that to the colored version. Let's see if we need to crop. We don't. And we are going to change again to the colored version. And the transparent logo is going to be the white logo that we're going to be using. All right. So that's right here. And once we scroll, we get a colored version. We need to have, um, we need the logo to be a little bit bigger. So let me see if I can change that. Go to design. No, maybe this is it. Oh, that's a bit much. All right. So 26 pixels is about where we're at. I think we need to go a bit smaller or we can go bigger. So it's a little bit smaller. 25 pixels is good. And um, yeah, that looks all right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and publish those changes. So we can click here. All right. We have the button. We go to design and we can change the color. But I don't want to do it like that. And we also see the text family. It says... Uh, default fam, default size, etc. I don't want to do it like that because you see these colors are everywhere, you know, this green and so on, they are everywhere. So there must be a universal location that we can change our colors. To find that location, we are going to go back and we're going to go back to our customizing main 
area. We are going to go to colors. And here we are going to see our global color palette. I don't think we can change. So I'm actually going to save this palette. So let me see color palettes. All right, there we go. So we have our predefined color palettes. Those are these. Let me just move out of the way. And we can click on these and everything is going to change. So let's select color palette one. And you notice everything changes. So this is a variation of what I'm thinking of going with a nice blue. But as you can see, this is a bit too bright, a little bit too um, outlandish, if you might. So we can go ahead and um, select our color palette. We can try this one, not so bad. This is actually pretty nice, but I think this green right here is a bit too heavy, a bit too bright, I mean. So we can keep going like this. This is perhaps a little bit better, all right? And for custom color palettes, we can create our own custom color palette. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click right here. To get colors, we're going to go to coolers.co. On coolers.co, we're going to find a trending palette. So let's just accept cookies. I actually have an account. I'm not going to log in though. And we're going to explore trending palettes. These are all nice color palettes that we can work with. I want to go with a nice blue color palette is what I was intending. We found a few blues just now, but I didn't like them for um, various reasons. And you know the interesting thing is, I could go ahead and use one of these blues, right? So the blue that I found good was this one. And I could change this blue to something else. And we could go like that. So we could start like that instead of trying to do everything from scratch. So let's just try it that way. And we click here, just get that color. And I'm going to change this blue to this one. And I like that. You notice this blue right here. This blue that is originally the button, not the hover, is this one. So we could change to change to um well, that's that. Let's try this one. And then um paste. And that looks good. Alright, so I think that is okay. Now we have um this gray area, which is this color three. So I'm gonna get a complementary color for our blue. A nice complementary. <laughs> so I'm gonna look at the color palettes actually to see what they have for complementary colors. So they are, for this one, they have another green, but it's a different kind of green. And I like to use an accent color. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab, a, I could grab an orange, but I'm not gonna use an orange. I'm gonna try an, try an orange. Let's just try an orange for um, a complementary color. All right, that is a bit much, if you ask me. So maybe a black would work well for the complementary color. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the orange to see everywhere that the complementary color is. Yeah, it's a little bit much, all right. It's nice, but it's not what we want at this location. So I'm going to go a full black. And then this color four, let's see where this is. And this is how you can go about. All right, so that's not so bad, guys. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change that to a full black. I'm going to change this to a darker orange, a really, an extremely dark orange. Let's see if we can find that somewhere here. Or what I could do is I could use, let me just grab this orange and I'm uh, gonna click here, I'm gonna click here. And uh, I can go over here. And uh, that could work. So now it's not so overbearing, but here's the thing that's happening. It's a little bit much, like it's too much because the accent is everywhere, guys. So let me copy this and we can go with the black. Let's go with a lighter version of the black. So something like here, perhaps. That's heavy. All right, that looks a little bit better. And um, I 
yeah this could work so it's just gonna be black and blue as I'm going as I'm seeing here there is another green here so the base text also team palette so we're gonna have to change the team color all right so that should that should be this actually so if I change it to green team palette color three one two three there it is yeah so this and this is the same so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I think that's the color that we used. Yeah, that could be it. And yeah, but here's what's happening for me, guys. We have a green right here in the background. We're not gonna be able to change this until we get to the actual um, design of the website because that doesn't look like it's a global color. But we're, we're gonna get there. We are gonna get there. And for some reason, I just seem to like the full black here a little bit more. And uh, let me try the lighter black here. All right, I know why I have this problem. Let me show you why I have this problem, guys. As you would see, actually, this doesn't look too bad, does it? Let's try a nice blue, see if that could work. So these are the headers, and um, let's go with full black right there. So we could perhaps find a nice blue. This is cornflower blue, I believe. I do like cornflower blue. So I'm gonna try cornflower blue. Yeah, this is nice. This is nice. Cornflower blue works, and then we have we have the black right here. Yeah, this actually works. Yeah, man. I right, just the Jamaican Creole just came on. I said, yeah, man. All right. So this works, guys. And the problem I was having, let me show you, is because I didn't want to have a lighter heading and then darker versions down here. But the colors were topsy turvy because though this was light right here, it was the same color that was being used here. All right. So I was having that issue. But since I've found a darker blue, the Cornflower blue, which is actually a color I use on my own personal website. I think that works well. So I'm just going to go ahead and publish these changes. The other thing that I want to do is I want to do some changes to the menu. I think we could have a bit heavier menu items. So let's just click right here. And we are going to design. We need to change the font weight. We need to change the font. But before I get to the font, which is, which is what I'm actually on, I mentioned color palettes, right? And I mentioned changing the colors here and the colors there. We have to learn about color psychology. So what is color psychology? Here it says color psychology is a study of how colors affect human behavior and emotions. And it is also research about how color affects, well, <laughs> yeah, right? It says here are some examples of how colors can affect people. You have warm colors like red, yellow, and orange can evoke happiness and comfort. Meanwhile, meanwhile, your blues and your greens can induce feelings of calmness and trust. So we had a very strong green on the website that changed to blue because for me, blue is very soothing. I mean, the room I'm in right now is actually blue. And we also have different research here. So 44% of people associate orange with joy, 52 yellow with joy, 39 associate green with contentment, and blue with relief, which is with me, blue is relief in. Turquoise is also associated with pleasure and purple with pleasure. So these are all um, colors. Here's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna go to images. And on images, we are going to take a look at this chart right here. It says the emotion, the industry, and it's used to. So let's just open this. I need to get this picture big. All right. So these are different colors. All right. This is a really nice chart to look at. It tells you the emotion that it elicits. So the green elicits safety, harmony, stability, reliability, and balance. Meanwhile, sky blue and blue releases these kinds of emotions. 
which industry is it best for us? So let's look if we find real estate in our blue. I don't think so. Real estate is actually good in green, come to think of it. No, I'll come to learn about it. So this strong green that they had on the website was really good for real estate. But I'm going to go with a blue. And uh, it says it's used to reduce stress, create calmness, is relaxed, balanced, revitalized, etc. So when you're putting together your color palette, for real estate, green is also a very good color you can go with. I also think your blacks and your grays is also very good, given that it's for premium pricing. So if you have a real estate practice that normally charges a premium price, blacks and grays are the way to go, really. And uh, that's it for color psychology. Use this chart. You can... I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to link it, but you can find the chart, Color Psychology chart. It's on Reddit, and you can figure all this stuff out for your own business. We also need to take a look at font for real estate businesses. So the five best real estate funds for successful branding in 2022. Here we go. It says Proxima Nova. It says Lato. I know Lato. It says Avenir. I've not used that. Sabon Pro, I've not used that. Yosefin Sans, I actually think this is the one I'll go with for our own business, for our own website. And those are the five that it mentions. Here's the thing, guys. Your font is going to influence the look and feel of your website greatly. I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's go back to our website, customize. We're not going to go to design just yet. We're just going to go to our global fonts. So we're going to go back to the overall settings right here. We're going to go to typography. And this is our base font. All right, it says plus Jakarta Sans. We're going to click right here at these three dots. All right, not these ones, but this one right here. And we have plus Jakarta Sans. You can click right here. And there are a host of different fonts that we can choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and change. So I'm going to click right here. And I'm going to use plus Jakarta, but I'm going to use a different font so you can see what I mean. Let's use Trebuchet. All right, notice the look and feel of the website has changed. This doesn't work at all with what we're doing, does it? Arial, not very good either. All right, and this is how you can notice that Helvetica is actually a pretty nice font, guys. Palatino, I haven't heard of that. Hmm, interesting. Myriad Pro. So you're realizing that the font does change the look and feel of our website. So we had a different font. I'm not going to use the one that we had. Let's look up Lato. I have used Lato before. Here is Lato. So there's a, a warning that comes up for um, using a Google font. So let's try Avenir, see if that is also a Google font. That is also a Google font, and um, we're going to cancel. So it seems that all of those are Google fonts. So I'm going to have to use something that... So this is the default. I don't want to use this font, but I mean, it works for what we want to do. You can go ahead and use the Google font, but I want to make a tutorial that everyone can benefit from. So that is why I have not go ahead, gone ahead and used one of those. Uh, I guess I can just stick with this font for now. But I do want to change something in the header. The weight was not what I wanted. Although I think it's better and better now. So let's just go. All right, so it's a lot heavier on the font right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep the default font as is. Let's click right here, the design and uh, weight. So to change the weight, you go to font, default family 15 pixel and medium. We can change that to bold. And notice it gets heavier. We can change it to a heavier bold. And you notice it gets heavier. Looks a lot better if you ask me. If we go back to medium, it's like that. And what I think it was on before was light 300. I think that's what it was at one point, which is what I wanted to change. But 500 isn't bad, actually, guys. 500 is just okay. If we go to 700, bold 700, it's like super heavy. So I'm going to stick to 500 medium because that is what I wanted to change to. And I'm going to publish. And that's it for our font. We already changed our logo. We can change our button as well. So let's change the button text. Instead of using the actual text, we are going to change to schedule viewing because when someone sees a listing on your website, they are going to want to view it if they're interested 
or they're going to want to request an inquiry. So we're going to schedule viewing. We are going to change the icon on the button. So we're going to scroll all the way down. This is the icon that's there. Let's click on it. And we're going to go to all icons and there is a house. Let's change it to that. All right. And that's good. The icon size is a bit much now. So let's just reduce the size. All right. And um, something interesting. So I think the actual icon that we had was in a circle, wasn't it? I think so. So I want to check if the icon was in a circle or not. I'm going to leave schedule viewing. We're going to have to create a page to schedule a viewing. So we can get to that a little bit later. Let's just publish this for now. I'm thinking that the icon was in a circle though, guys. Yeah, it was in a circle. It was the one that they used. So um, we can change our icon. So I just get a free icon. So let's go to flat icons to get a nice icon of flat icon. We're going to get a nice house icon. So it's going to get house. Come on. Scroll. And uh, going to click on this one. Let's see if it's free. Free for personal use. That's good. Let's download the SVG. Also, I need to have a, a license to download the SVG. So I can get the SVG. Let me download the PNG. I will need to attribute. Uh, sometimes these things are so annoying, guys. You can't just go to Google. That's the thing. You can't just go to Google and type house icon and pick anything that you want. That doesn't work. Let me see if we can get this. So these are all um, paid. Let's go to free pick then. And let's see if we can get icon, house, get black. See if we can find one that's within a circle. Here is one. And we perhaps need, yeah. <laughs> So I probably should just ensure that the license that we're looking at is free SVG. And that should narrow down our search rather nicely. Let's try this one. All right, so we got this one right here. All right, we go back to our website. We're gonna upload icon, choose icon, upload file, and set the file that we just downloaded. That's good. And we're gonna install. There we go. And our icon size. All right, that's good. That works well. All right, that's good, that's good. And we're gonna publish our changes. And that's it for our font. This took up quite a bit of time, actually, because I was doing everything off the fly. Now let's start editing our header and our footer. So let's scroll all the way up, all the way up. We go back and this is our header. These are the elements on our header. Let me move myself all of the way to edit our header. Once we are here, we can just click main row and we can start designing our main row. It is transparent and the, the, the sticky state is white. So you can scroll and you can change this to red. So, you know, <laughs> that's actually pretty ugly. Same if it was blue. So we're going to go back to white for the sticky state. And that's it for the transparent state. I'm not going to change anything. All right. Notice you can change, but we're going to go back to transparent for a transparent state. Top border none. We're going to keep everything here as is. We've already done some changes. We've already done some changes with these elements right here. Let's click on this one. I wonder what this does. So it does bring about um, a sidebar. So we're going to do some work on this as well. I'm going to leave it as is. Let's just go to the design. Let's close that. And uh, yeah, not too loud, not too exciting. I think this is good as is. Yeah, this looks good. So that's it for the header. You can just go ahead and edit your header in that manner where you just click main row. Same for the footer. For the footer, you can go back and you go back and you select footer. Where is footer? It's right here on the header. And like you see right here, so let's scroll all the way down to the footer. And there's something I wanted you to see from our header design. So, um, all the way we have 
one area right here, top row, there's nothing there. We have two columns right here, one column, two column. Within this column, we have a newsletter subscription. And within this column, we have a header icon, header, text, text, text. And down here, we have our copyright information. Here we see copyright. Here we see our header. Here we see our other element. So we can go ahead and make changes. We can add a button. All right. So we can add our button right here, which is going to appear right there. And in the same way, we can add the footer menu. All right. If we would like, so there's that, we can go ahead and click here and change the design from front to white. All right. We can also go right here and just click middle row. We can change the three columns as you see. And in the next column, we can click right here. Let's just click to the middle row, middle row, like that. Go back and we can add a search box, for example. And the thing is, guys, that's how you could go about editing your footer. You, you would edit the header in the same way as well, which is quite interesting because let's just click on the main row of the header. We'll just take us back to the header and we see all these areas right here. And that's how we do it. But the thing is, I don't want to keep these changes that have been done. So I'm just going to reload and not save so I can edit the actual thing right here afterwards. All right. So reload. I don't need the most recent version of the autosave. And I'm going to scroll all the way to the footer. I'm going to go to my footer. All right, here we are. So we're going to edit this area. Going to replace with media library. I'm going to use my actual logo. Let's go right here. Actually, let's use the white logo. And select. And the text right here, I'm going to change that to Zelen Real Estate Agents LA. It's going to be right here. You can put a description of your business, the best real estate agents in Los Angeles. You put your opening hours, well, your email. So let's just go with our email and our contact number. We already have our logo right here. Subscribe to newsletter. Change this text. Actually, let me change the text for you. It's best to add actual information here so you guys have an idea. Remember, you want someone to give you their email address, so you have to offer something of value in return. So this would be a message that you would use. All right, from our team with over 100 years of combined experience. And the reason why you're going to do it this way is because you want to assure them, you want to tell your website visitor what they're going to get and why it's valuable. That way, them share, sharing their email with you would be something that they want to do. We can change our copyright. Just click right here. WordPress tutorial by Zelhan. Open link in new tab. Bit. All right. And we could edit the entire area and go to design. So we click right here, edit, and then design. And this is the link hover it says. Initial, let's see if we can change the background. Inherited, it is. So um, what I can do is I can just change right here. Edit, design, row background. And I think this is the color. Yeah, this is the color. Yeah, so this is the color. I can edit here and it's the same. So I've actually got back the color. Let me go ahead and publish these changes. I want to edit these social icons. I don't think I can just edit them like that. So I'm going to go back, go back and general social icons. So I believe these are the Pinterest Slack. We have YouTube. We need to have YouTube guys. So what we'll our YouTube link right here. And of course, so that's it for the header and the footer guys. And yeah, that's it. I'm gonna close. I don't know where. So that's it for the header and the footer. Just gonna head over to our website. This is our website as it is. We're gonna learn how to edit this website now. So just go to contact. Now we're gonna learn how to edit this website template. We have something going on here. All right, so it's very easy to edit the template. We're just gonna go to contact page, click on contact and edit page. 
I'm going to move my stuff all the way yet again. All the way down. All right. So this is very easy to get done. So in order for you to know what I'm, to understand what I mean is, I'm going to just open this right here. And this is what we have right now, right? So this is what we have on the actual page. When we're editing, this is what we're working with. All right, now, here's the thing, guys. It's WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And it's the Gutenberg page builder. This isn't Elementor. We've done tutorials with Elementor, but this is the Gutenberg page builder. It works very similarly, though not the same. Here's what I mean. Whatever you see is what you get. So you're not going to have this contact here, as you realize. It's not going to be there. But let's see. We want to change this picture. You literally click on the picture. You can replace. And I'm going to grab our next picture. So let's just go to our free pick icon. Actually, let's close this and let's close this and close this and close this. And we're going to keep that. We're going to get free pictures online. A few places we can go to get free pictures is Pixabay. Another one is Pexels. Another one is Unsplash, though I don't use Unsplash anymore. You can also go to Free Pick. All right. And believe it or not, you can go to Google and type real estate. Type real estate. Go to images. Do not just grab an image right here. It's not going to work. That will get you copyrighted. Because if you click on this, notice what it says. Images may be subject to copyright. So you can just pick an image from Google and use it. What you can do is you can go to more, no tools, go to tools, usage rights, and do creative commons. And you have to do that every single time you search. And this is actually a house in Jamaica, guys. It's actually pretty nice. So it might be subject to copyright. So why, why, why are they sharing it with me? So anyway, that aside, we are now going to go back to Pixabay. And I'm just going to type in real estate. I don't like using Google because I don't know what I'm getting and I have to search. And sometimes the highest quality pictures aren't there. All right. I like this picture. So let's just click on this. Oh, that's not for Pixabay. If you notice what's happening here, it says coupon from iStock. So you're going to get 20% off from iStock. So these are actually um, iStock pictures. But this, royalty-free images, these are from Pixabay. So I just find something really nice. I do like this kitchen. I like this one. Let's actually go with this one since it's a little bit um, minimalistic and it's there. So you click on that. We're going to learn image SEO right away. Before we get there, after you click on the image, you're going to click download. First thing that you need to understand, different image sizes. You want to keep your image size as low as possible or as small as possible because if the image size is bigger, it means that the web page is going to be bigger and it's going to be much slower. When you're loading on mobile devices, that also means that it's going to be a little bit harder or a little bit slower for your website to load, which a lot of people don't like. Typically, you want your website to load within two minutes. So here's a trick that you can do. Download the 1280 version. Go ahead and hit download. Once you've saved, we're going to go to TinyJPG. Once we get to TinyJPG, we're going to upload the image that we just downloaded. Here we go. And it's going to compress it for us. So we've moved from 141 and a half kilobytes to 85.7 kilobytes. We download this and it is the compressed version that we're going to upload to our website. Go back to our website. We click on our image, replace. We're going to upload this time. So click upload, select your compressed image. And there we go. But here's the thing. Now we need to do image SEO. Click on your image, general all the way down to image attributes or link. You're going to change your alt text. Your alt text is ideally going to tell your website visitors more about your image. And it's literally going to come up whenever your website doesn't load properly and it cannot load your image. is going to display the alt text. And whenever someone who can't see, they're visually impaired, they're blind, comes to your website or they're using a screen reader, is going to tell them what is there in place of the image. So your alt text should describe your image. Now, we have a real estate listing website, Zelhan Real Estate. You don't want to just say a picture of a kitchen. Not very helpful. So this is what we're going to say, Zelhan Real Estate, minimalist townhouse kitchen from Los Angeles. And this tells us that a little bit about our 
kitchen. And one of the features that people love for kitchens is granite countertops, apparently. So we're going to say with granite countertop, countertops. So if someone goes now to Google, this is how it's going to work. If someone now goes to Google and you're going to say, houses for sale, Los Angeles. Now kitchens with granite countertops, Los Angeles for sale. So I just add for sale. There's a lot of keyword stuff in. So this is going to influence what Google sees because the alt text also tells Google what the image is about. This Zelan Real Estate Minimalist Townhouse Kitchen from Los Angeles with granite countertops for sale. This is going to tell you that... So I could actually change this to Minimalist Townhouse for sale in Los Angeles with kitchens with granite countertop. We can change the wording, but essentially you want to use something here that is going to be a search term that your ideal client would use. You're going to also use that for your title text. And uh, the name of the image should be changed as well. So we're going to click right here, replace, open media library. This is also a place that you can put that, and you can put it on the caption, and you can put it on the description. For the name of the image, we're going to use Zelhan iPhone Real Estate Kitchen Los Angeles. Not equal, but iPhone Los Angeles. And I'm going to put for sale. You don't just sell kitchens, but you, have, you understand. You probably want to use a granite countertop deal. And yes. And that's how you're going to do image SEO. I am not going to show you the changes just yet. I'm going to go right here to get in touch and I'm going to click right here. I'm going to change the content. You can literally just click on it and highlight it. Our team is waiting to serve you. So our team is waiting to help you find your dream home. Dream home. Come to the contact form below to get our help. And I'm going to update. Now when I've updated, all right, so this is what we've changed. We're going to go back to the actual page and we're going to refresh. And you're going to see something very interesting. Huh? Beautiful, right? What you see is what you get. So what happened? Well, and when you look at the page, so this is the actual page right here. This is the actual page. Everything on the page is called an element, as you might realize. So this is a header or a widget. So this is, a, this is not part of the page, actually, guys. So this is a picture widget. This is a header widget. This is a text widget. This is a contact form or a short code, text widget, etc. You can add a widget by clicking here. And you can scroll all the way down. And here's a paragraph. Here's a heading. Here's a code. Let's just grab a paragraph. We're going to put it right beneath here. So let's grab paragraph and go right here. The text. So we cannot see the text. So let's just type in some text. So know that something is there. I've been typing. We cannot see the text. Here's the next thing that you learn about widgets. So you click on the widget that you want to edit and move out of the way again. I'm all over the place today, aren't I? You, move, you click on the widget that you want to edit and you click this icon right here. Once you click that icon, you're going to get the options. Notice, options. You're going to click text for color, all right? And you can select one of our theme colors. Notice these are our theme colors. And I'm going to use the white. I can use this white, it doesn't matter. And once you update, you're going to see the changes reflected right here. All right, beautiful. You can go ahead and delete. So you click on the element, three dots, and all the way down, you delete and update. All right. Refresh, and it's going to be reflected. All right. The next thing that you notice is this area. You notice this little icon that the mouse pointer has turned into. You can use that to add space above and a space beneath, all right? And that is how you would do your margin and your padding. We're not gonna discuss margin and padding right now, but there is an element of video below that explains margin and padding rather nicely. But we'll get there very shortly. Too much space, all right, so let's go back to 36 or thereabout, and let's add some space down here, about 82 pixels is good. We don't know what this block is or this widget is. A few ways we can learn. We can click right here, and it tells us what we're in, where we are, and what's within each part. So this is where we are. So we're going to click right here. This is a row. It should have two columns. This is the first column. Notice it is highlighted, and this is the second column. Notice it's highlighted. So let's click on the first column. 
We don't know what this is, so let's open or expand that column. All right. So we have an image. All right. We remember the image. That's that. We have a heading, advanced heading. We also have an advanced text, and we have a container wrapper. Ooh, what is a container wrapper? We have no idea, but we can expand. So let's expand. In the container wrapper, we have text, another container wrapper, which is this thing right here, and then another text. So one of the texts is the day of the week. Then we have a container wrapper, which is this right here. And if you look right here, you notice what's actually displayed in this container wrapper, all right? And we have another text which tells us the opening hours. In my country, nine to five is the standard opening hours. So I'm just gonna add 9 a.m. to f not 6 to 5 p.m., guys. That's nobody would want to work for you. All right. So 9 to 5 is what we have. And it's gonna be the same setup for all of our container wrappers. If you want one of these elements, this is a cool part. You want one of these elements to use somewhere else on the page, you can click right here. Actually, let's go back first. It says container wrapper, that's the name. So you click right here and you type container. Wrapper, notice it's here, and you can also close and notice it's in our green shift elements. Once you do that, you click, drag, and drop it where you want it, and that's how it's going to work. Let's see how they use this. So it actually has a broken line at the top, so we can just click on it. No, click on it right here. And we can take a look at the options to see how it works. So we're going to have to take a look at the border because the border is at the top. So let's um, general border. So let's look at that. The border at the top. The border is custom, it says. And it's actually custom. And that's that. We can also see that there's something here for spacing. So let's click on spacing and we notice 15 pixels, right? 15 pixels at the top. And we have default for overflow. And you repeat these options, all right? So everything that's here, you repeat from this to put on this. We could just duplicate. So we could just do this and um, duplicate. Once you've duplicated, we can click on this and go right here and then we don't need to use this one so that is actually an easier way of going about it guys let me see if we have the right one no we have the wrong one so we undo and this should be it <laughs> we're having some a tough time removing this one so let me just click on that one on another way we could actually remove this because i'm having a tough time removing this i'm going to undo and we're going to use this again this time, we're going to close. We're actually in the second column this time. All right, so we click here. And we're in the second column. And this is a container wrapper. We don't need that one. We need this one. That's the one right here. And now we can delete it. So these little tricks do get handy for us as we go along editing our website. And let's just update to see what changes are going to be made. Let's go back to our contact and let's reload. And you notice it's right there. And the thing about it, guys, is that you can just keep going like this in making your page. You don't have to know what is what. You literally look at your page and you see something interesting. We don't know what this is, but it's in the second section. So let's click on the section. We have one column and there must be three rows within that. So this is the advanced heading. This explains itself. But we have three rows with one column each. We have an image. That's that. Then we have a heading. That's that. Then we have a text that is this dark part here, this heavy part. And then we have a text advance, and this is here. And this is basically saying where our offices are. So let's use three popular Jamaican cities. Everyone knows Kingston, which is the capital of the country. Everyone also knows Montego Bay, where there is uh, another airport. So there is one airport in Kingston and one in Montego Bay. And everyone should know Negril. Negril is a beautiful place with absolutely beautiful white sand beaches, guys. So I'm actually going to show you a picture of Negril. I'm going to add it to the website. So let's go to Negril. Go to images. And this is the beach in Jamaica, guys. This is a Jamaican beach in Negril. 
we're going to grab this picture. So grab this picture and add it to our website. Go back. We're going to click on the image. We're going to replace and upload. Remember, tiny JPG always compress your images, 264 kilobytes. That's a bit much. Wow, nothing was compressed on this one. Interesting. Yeah, so it wasn't compressed at all. Nothing was saved. All right, so it's going to upload, upload it as is. Once that's uploaded, that is Negro. Going to do that. And that's it for the image. Now, you notice that the size isn't the same. So you're going to want to get images of the same dimension. To figure that out, you click on the image. You're going to go to Replace. Open Media Library, 615 by 413. And this image is 2,190 by 1160. So we're going to use these dimensions. Six. Wait, no, 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 no. I don't remember which image it is. Oh, that's the one. All right, so 615 by 413 says, and that's it for the contact page, guys. I'm not going to do too much on the contact page because there is another page that I want to get to. So let's just upload. Update, we're going to view page because we need to make a change. We're going to go to the properties page. All right, so here's the thing that I want us to learn now. When we look at the properties page, we cannot just go to edit page, right? If we go to contact, which we were just on and we just learned how to edit that page, we can go to edit page. It's the same with the about us page and with the home page. We can literally just click edit page and it'll be okay. But on the properties page, we can't just click edit page, all right? If we click on a single listing of a property, think a new tab, all right? We also can't just edit the page. We can't edit the property, but we can't just edit the page like that. And that's gonna present an issue when we want to change this design. For example, when we look at the properties page, there's a green right here which we don't really want to be the case. So here's how we're gonna edit this. We're gonna go back to dashboard. I'm gonna open in a new tab, all right? On the dashboard, we're gonna to go to blocks and content blocks. Under content blocks, let's just view the properties archive here. Let's just view it. And this is what we see. So we're gonna edit this block. It's not a page, it's a block. So we're gonna close and we're going to edit, all right? On this block area, we can edit just like normal, all right? What we can do is we click right here and we want to change the background. So we're going to change the background. So there's an image in the background. We're going to change that. So let's just go back to Pixabay and let's look for a nice picture, something really simple. And um, let's just use this one. This should be good. Download 1280, download. Now that we've downloaded, we're going to upload. We've uploaded. Let's see what the compression is for this one. We've lost 26%. That's good. Download. We're going to go back. To our content block we are going to scroll all the way down background we are going to change the background so we have a classic background we're going to change the image so this is the image all right so just upload a new image upload select the image that's been compressed once you've selected the image that's been compressed remember always do image seo all right and we're going to add it we can change All right, that's good. We're gonna change the overlay from green. So this is a gradient. I know which color I'm gonna use for my gradient. I'm actually going to select a blue-ish gradient. Um, about this one. It should be good. On something a little bit darker. So I think I'm gonna to have to select my own colors. All right, I'm gonna use black on this side. And then on this side, I'm gonna use the blue, all right? And then now the opacity, yeah, that's good. So we're gonna keep that for the opacity 42%, so 0.42 is 42%, that's good. And um, let's just update that. Now we're gonna view content block. All right, that's good. So let's close that. Let's go back to properties and let's reload. And that is good. Continue scrolling. Everything is perfectly fine as is. And we're gonna learn how to change these options and so on soon. So let's just um, use a pagination, that's all right. Now let's look at our single listing property. 
all right comfortable apartment this is all right this is all right and um we can go ahead and edit these areas as well so let's just go back to our edit content block so we've completed that we're going to go back now let's just view this next content block to see what it is featured properties all right that's okay i guess for the mobile version and um, desktop, let's view. This looks good. I'm not gonna do any changes here either. Contact agent pop-up, let's just view. We wanna ensure our color palettes and everything is okay. So this is all right, it's very too straightforward and to the point, let's close that. Property single template. So we might want to change something here, all right. Maybe, maybe not. So if we click contact agent, the form that we just looked at is going to come up. And um, it's not going to work right here. We can edit this. All right. We can edit it. But I think it's fine as is, except for down here. Might want to change this background color, background overlay color and the actual background. So I'm just grab another background for right here. Should be able to find something. Let's use pix pixels for this one. And then stay at Villa. And um, should find something really nice right here. I'm gonna use this one, 1280 by 720 or save, compress. We haven't lost, we haven't compressed at all. So it's gonna leave it as is. Property single, so I'm gonna close and I'm going to edit. I'm gonna edit the property single. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. Click right here. We are going to change the background. Wait, we need to upload the image first. Remember image SEO guys, select, that's good. Now, so we're gonna change the background overlay. I think that's where my biggest issue is right now. Um, the opacity is fine. All right, but it's using one of the theme colors that I don't want to be used. All right, let's use the Capacity, change it to this blue. I mean, the gradient is nice and all. So um, I guess we could use the same black gradient that we used previously. And then let's do that and our opacity, that's good. So um, let's do this. And I think that's okay. Gonna update and we're gonna save. Okay, so two things have gonna be updated. So we're gonna view the content block and let's also view the site. So the content block is this. And we just made a change down here. I don't really like this, the outstanding blue right here though. I think I can change that rather easily. Just make this part be the blue. And make this part be the black. Yeah, sure, why not? Update, let's refresh. And that's good. And, um, We've also done a bit of changes right here as well. We're gonna to have to change this area, but I guess we'll get there, guys. I think we can change that from the actual home page. And yeah, we've done well. So let's close that and close that. We're gonna go back. I think property sim property single template of what we looked at. Let's just look at the property card. Should be a very straightforward part. Yeah, very straightforward. Nothing to write home about. All right, so we're gonna close that. The thing I want you guys to take a look at now, so let's just um, go to properties. Let us say you're on the property and you want to create a property. There are some fields that you're gonna have to add. We can learn how to edit these templates. It's called advanced custom field. It's not for beginners, but I'll consider doing it towards the end of the tutorial. But for now, if you want to add a property, there are ways that you can go about it. When you click on the property, it's also gonna appear right here. All right, I was thinking of changing this design right there a bit, but I noticed that it was all good as is. 
oh, look, there is something else that has to, has to be changed, the color for these icons. So um, let me just go back, content blocks, property single, and we're gonna edit that. We need to change the color of these icons background. The green isn't being used on the website anymore. So we're going to click on that. Make sure we have the right thing. Color. No, so there is no background color. All right, here's the background. We're gonna change this to our that. Background, change it to our that. Background, change it to this. Background, change it to this. And let's see if we can actually set a nice hover. So yeah, we can set a nice hover actually. But I'm gonna leave it as is. And um I'm gonna update. I think that's it. I don't think we have that green anywhere else on the website. I think we're good. Yeah, we should be good. Uh-huh. So we can go back now. Wait, cancel. I'm gonna update, save, and let's go back now. That's good. And that is that for that. No, here's what I'm gonna do for you guys. I'm gonna teach you just a small bit, an absolute small bit about creating advanced custom fields. Two things that you need to know. Let's just go back to our properties section. All right, here's our properties. Other properties, we see this right here. This is an advanced this is a custom post type, CPT, custom post type. WordPress by default doesn't allow you to create property type listings on your website. You can create a post, which is a blog post. And if you add WooCommerce, you can create a product. To create a real estate listing type that you can create an actual real estate listing looking like this and you click on it and you get this field. You have to use what's called an advanced custom field with custom post types. And um, here's how it's gonna work. You're gonna go back to our header, our dashboard, sorry. We're gonna go to ACF, which is a plugin. You click on ACF and you're gonna get the option of property because we've already created a property. When you click add new, you can create a, a new um, custom post type. But I'm not gonna go through all of that because we already have what we need. It's gonna go back, property. We are going to edit property. We have, two general, we have two fields under our properties post type. We have a general field and a property amenities. For our general field, we're gonna have several different fields. We're gonna have price, total area, and location. These are gonna be the fields or the type of data that you're gonna enter for all your properties. And under our property amenities, which is a custom part where not every property is gonna have this information, you're gonna have bedrooms, bathroom, garages, that's the British way of saying it. Pool, laundry, fitness gym, air condition, nearby restaurants. The thing about this part is that not every property is going to have a laundry, a fitness gym, air condition, garage, but well, I would hope it has a bathroom and a bedroom. So that's the difference right here between property amenities and the general field. The fields are what you're going to enter for data. So you're going to have to enter address, I hope, location or address, the total area size of the place and the price for every listing that you have, but not all listings are gonna have all of these fields. Now, the next part that you need to be focused on, and I'm not teaching you how to make an advanced custom field and custom post type right here, to use ACF and CPT. I'm not gonna be teaching you, I'm just explaining how it works. So it says, show this field location if the post type is equal to a property because all properties must have a location. But never mind that. We're also going to have to take a look at the template. So it says right here, we have a default template. Let's go to our post types. We'll get there very soon for the, for the actual template. On the post types, it's just one, which is a property. We could create a new post type. 
And if you look over to the right hand side, you do see um, property. Where is it? You're probably looking at the oh, there it is, properties. All right, so we could create a new post type. So the file template, new listings, new listing, post type key, new listing, sure, taxonomy. Let's say it's a property type. And it's public hierarchy and that's that that's the default template. Parent is properties. And save changes, you're gonna see it appear over here. Save changes. And let's see new listings. All right, here we have new listings. See, we have um, properties. So you can go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna go back to post types and I'm gonna delete the new listings um, post type. All right. We also have the taxonomies that we just looked at. Nothing to be excited about. It's just listed with the property types. You can go ahead and edit to see what's there. It's just some basic information that you're going to need because it's what we looked at literally just now when we were making our own. And we're not going to look at anything here under more because these are all um, pro features. Very good. So that's it for advanced custom field. We're going to create a listing just for you to see. So you're going to go to properties. Uh, wait, let's just look at all properties for now. You're going to see all of our property listings right here as is. Let's go ahead and add new. It shouldn't say new page. It should say new property, but okay. Our list price is going to be 750000 One, two, three. Our total here is 7,500. Let's just put 4,500 square foot. Not very big, but it's okay. Our location, I am going to say Negril. City, Los Angeles, California. How many bedrooms? Five bed, six bedrooms, seven bathrooms. We have a four car garage. We do have one pool, two laundry, a fitness gym, and air, air conditioned, yes, and no nearby restaurants. All right. We are going to add a featured image. Let's use this picture from the Negril Beach that we just took from before. And uh, I think that's it. Let's add the title. Negril Beach Vacation Villa. All right. And we're going to publish this. All right. We're going to view property now that we've published it. And here we go. Negril Beach Vacation Villa, total area, pool, the bathroom, bedroom. This is, here we go. And here we go. And uh, here we go. Now, here's the thing that I also want to show you guys. We can go ahead and edit property, like I was saying, just edit property. And the information right here will come up again for you to edit. The next thing that I want you guys to do, so um, let me just go back so we can actually go back under property. Let's go to properties. Under properties, you're going to see right here. So we can add a property type, which is so good. So here's a villa. Let's search if our villa is actually going to be there because I didn't select a property type of villa for my property. So we're going to go back to select category and search. Let's see if I can change this property type to a villa and um, edit property. There must be a field to change it to a villa. General, property amenities, property type. And here we go, villa and update. All right. Now we can go back. So I'm going to go back and go to properties. And it's going to be listed under villas. Go to search. And here it's now listed. That's very good. The next thing that I want, I think we've covered most of what I wanted to show you. One of the things that I did want to do is once we click on schedule viewing, I wanted to go to a page where you could schedule your viewing. It's really very easy to set that up. You go to dashboard. We're going to go to pages, add new page. No, we can't do that yet because we need a form to schedule viewing. So we're going to go to Fluent Forms. Forms. We're going to create a new form. So these are our forms, subscription and contact. Let's go to add new form. We are going to choose a template. Let's just use a conversational form. Those are always very cool to work with. We're going to take your name, your email, 
we're going to change from subject to property of interest. And it says right here, what type of property, or well, which property are you interested in? Still in viewing. All right, your query. I'm going to change this from query to available time. I could use a different option for available time. Matter of fact, let me not be lazy. Let me do that. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to add right here. I'm going to add a drop down. And um, where is the drop down? There we go. Drop down. Rename it uh, availability. Select time below. The first option is going to be an early morning viewing, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The next is going to be an afternoon viewing of 11, 30 a.m. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the next is going to be a weekend view. All right. And we can customize our submit button, but I'm going to leave it as is. If you want to customize your submit button, just go to default style and custom, and then you can change your options right here. All right. And click OK. Watercolor is good. And the text color is good. And the hover state background color is a very dark blue border color and um, good. Yes, yeah, so that's that. We go to our, we're gonna make these all required as well because you wouldn't want someone to schedule. So we have name, email, want to have their contact number as well. Because we do need to keep in contact with them after they've submitted this request. Now we go to design, cancel, let's save form. Go to the design. You don't think there's too much you want to change right here. We're very okay with everything that's there. So we're going to go to settings and integration. Not thank you for your message, but thank you for your interest in one of our listings. One of our agents will be, will serve you soon. Okay. We're going to just keep it on the same page. Grammarly is saying that this is poorly typed, perfectly fine. You guys will have um, a copyright editor, a copywriter. So that's good. Let's go to email notifications. We are going to have to add a notification, new notification, interest in listing, new interest in listing. All right. I'm going to send to and. Um, new listing viewing schedule and uh, I'm just going to add a short code to say that property of interest the name the availability and contact number and this is going to be pulled from the form that I just um, completed and we're gonna save this notification. We need to ensure it's on, it is on. And uh, we can integrate, but most of it is, um, most of the integrations are pro, so we're not gonna bother ourselves with that. We're gonna copy this. And our form is good as far as I can tell. Let's ensure we save settings. We're now gonna go to pages, add new page. When we've added new page, we're gonna say, um, schedule listing, join. And we're going to add a block. The block that we need is a short code, guys. So we just copied the short code for the form. Now we're going to add the form to our website. Let's just click on that. It's going to go right here and let's paste. It's a conversational form and publish, publish. Now let's view the page. It should be good. All right, your name. There we go. Email at mail.com. Okay, contact number. Okay, and okay, and I'm going to say 11 to 1 in the afternoon. 
and thank you for your message. We'll get in touch with you shortly. So this is what you're gonna see. Um, we're gonna copy this link. We're gonna add it to this button. So we're gonna go to customize. No, let's go to, let's just go to customize. All right, a few things that we're gonna have to do. We're gonna go to customize. And we can, instead of going to header and everything, so let's close this because we don't need that. Instead of going to header, we just literally go right here and click and paste. Click behavior, okay, and publish. That's gonna lead us there, all right. And um, you're gonna go back and we're gonna close right here. We're gonna go to our menus, or what we can do is we can go to dashboard and then go to appearance menus. We're gonna say schedule listing viewing. We're gonna add this to menu, and we're gonna add that under properties as well. So it's a little bit easier for our navigation, that's good. And uh, that's that. Now, um, I believe that we're pretty much good so far, right? So let's just go ahead and test if this link works. Schedule viewing. All right, that is good. Now I remember that once we were, once we were here, once we clicked here, something really beautiful came up over here. We're gonna work on this. I like the color, so let's just go ahead and um, work on the sidebar. All right, so let's close. We're gonna to go to dashboard. We are gonna to go to Bloxy content blocks. So this is right here. This is a part that we need to edit. So that's not it. All right, so this is what we're gonna edit. Next, desktop off canvas content. So we're just gonna go ahead, desktop off canvas content. Let's go ahead and edit this. Um, I'm gonna change this image. All right, I'm gonna use our white logo. All right, and view more, that is okay. Okay, okay, we've already edited those. I'm gonna click on this, our background. Let's see our color. And um, text color is white, or link, hover. And um, icons color. All right, so the icon color is this. When you hover, I'm gonna change it. All right, so there isn't much that we can do based on the colors that we have available, unless I'm gonna go with white. All right. Yeah, so I'm gonna click right here, see if I can get. This is bad design, by the way, because this color isn't anywhere else on the website, but I wanna make it a little bit more exciting. The hover, it gets dark when, it's, when it hovers. So I'm just gonna use um, white. And um, I guess this white is good. Yeah, I guess that's okay. And um, we can change the text as usual. We can add more content if we like, that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and update. And let's just go back to our website to ensure that it works. Visit site and, ugh, that's an ugly. That's another logo, so um, we're gonna have to edit again. So I'm gonna go all the way back to edit content block. And um, there we go. Let's see if I can just view it right here. I think it's okay. All right, that's good. So um, go back and um, visit site. And um, yeah, all right, this looks good. This looks good. That's okay. We like what we see here, our properties, this works as well. We did have a different, did we have a different menu? Yeah, right here, this menu. It bugs me because this isn't what I'm used to. So I'm just go ahead and customize and see if I can find that menu. This button that's right here because it's not the one that I'm used to. So there's something happening with this page. All right, so just click on this and the label text, let's just say schedule viewing and um, the URL. I don't think I have the schedule listing. Oh yeah, we do. 
All right, and we're going to have to change the icon. And um, we uploaded the icon that we used, this one, it was. And the icon is a little bit big, so let's just reduce the size. All right, and publish. I think we're good. I am. Um, wouldn't mind having this button stand out, so I'm just going to go to the design, the default state, text color. We're going to use white for the default text color, the hover. Um, let's change the background before. Uh, background, background, background. Where is the background? Default state initial is that, and the hover is this. So, um, yeah, so we're going to have to change this to um, white. All right, that's good. And publish. So we do like that button now. We're going to change the logo because that isn't the logo that's supposed to be used anymore. So we're going to change that. We want a bigger logo. Okay, and let's just get a sticky state logo. I believe this could work as well. All right. And um, yeah, let's use a black logo. I never use the black logo, guys. So let me just use a black logo for the sticky state logo. And um, yeah, this looks good. We can do sticky state shrink and it gets smaller. So there's that. And uh, yeah, we're good. We're doing well, guys. This has been wonderful. This has been absolutely wonderful. So here's the thing. If you made it this far in the tutorial, I, I want to ask you something. We've actually made a website of sorts, right? You understand how the website works, you understand how to edit it. Would you like for me to create tutorials on how to market this website? Google ads, perhaps meta ads, writing blog posts, SEO, email marketing, lead generation, doing things that will use this website to get you more leads and tenants or clients or prospects that are interested in your listings. If you want that, you just comment below marketing, literally just comment marketing or marketing tutorial, whatever it might be. Just express your desire below and I'll actually make those tutorials because that's my comfort zone really, actually making money from these things. So yeah, this has been good. I enjoyed this. We've learned a lot. We've done a lot and um, I think I'm gonna edit page, all right? Just to change that blue, I never did like the blue that was here. So I'm going to use... Mm -mm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Change that. I never liked that blue that was there. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to change. Let me just change that. And we can change the background here, like I said. I'm actually extending the, the tutorial when I do this, aren't I? So I do need to remove the background that is in that. I'm going to just, oh, I see what's happening. So I'll just do this. All right. Or I can do that. And I can change the background to this. Yeah, that's ugly. All right. I'm going to update it anyway because I made some changes, but it's fine. Yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial, guys. I don't want to make this any longer than it already is. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. And remember to hit subscribe. We're on our way to making more amazing tutorials like this one. So, yeah, happy to have you. Thank you guys for watching. Cheers.